Today on our 1999 GMC Suburban, we'll be installing the e-trailer brake controller seven to four way install kit. Part number ETBC7. To begin our install, we'll first go ahead and mount the install bracket for our seven pole connector. We'll be using the hardware provided with our install kit. Now with the mount secured to the bracket, we'll go ahead and install the bracket on the vehicle. Because of the size hitch, we'll need to locate the seven pole connector next to the hitch so it doesn't stick out too far. Using a couple self-tapping screws, we can attach it directly to the bottom side of the bumper. Note this vehicle is equipped with a manufacturer's tow package, so we'll be able to connect directly into it. The butt connectors we'll use to make these connections are not supplied with our install kit. We'll go ahead and remove the pre-wired four pole connector by cutting it off. And then we'll clean up the wires by removing any of the excess tape or old debris. Now we'll go ahead and strip back the wires and add our butt connectors. With this application, We'll be able to match it up color for color to the new seven and four pole. To make this connection, we'll go ahead and cut the plug off the new seven pole. We'll go ahead and strip back the wires and start making our connections. We'll connect brown to brown, yellow to yellow, and the dark green on the manufacturer's side to the green wire on the four pole connector we just cut off. The white wire on the manufacturer side will cut off short as we'll use the new ground wire coming from the seven pole connector. The purple wire from our seven pole connector will match up with the light green wire on the manufacturer's side. This connection will be for the reverse tail lights. The orange wire will be our hot lead going to the seven pole connector and the blue wire will match up color for color and will be the brake signal circuit to our new seven pole connector. We'll go ahead and cut the length, strip them back and connect it to the yellow butt connectors already attached to our new seven pole. Next, we'll go ahead and take the white wire, which is our ground wire, and route it over to the frame. This application, we don't need such a long ground wire, so we'll go ahead and cut off the excess, add a new ring terminal, and use a self-tapping screw to connect it directly to the frame. Now with all our connections made, we'll go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up our wires. Now with our connections made and the wires taped up, we'll go ahead and take one of the black zip ties from our install kit and secure it here behind the hitch. Next, we'll move up to the engine compartment. We'll need to locate the orange and blue wire 
typically taped to the main wiring harness below the brake booster. As you can see, it's located right here. Now, using my utility knife, I'll go ahead and cut the electrical tape and pull the wires free. Now we'll go ahead and set these wires aside as we'll need to locate a suitable grommet to go through the firewall with our wiring. Since there are no manufacturer's grommet to run through, we'll need to go ahead and make our own. We'll install a grommet to run our wires through. First, we'll use a smaller bit to make a pilot hole, checking our location. And then we'll step up to the larger size as specified per the grommet instructions. The grommet we'll be using today is not provided with our install kit, but can be purchased separately. Part number SWC8057. Now with the hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and install our grommet. Now we'll get back into the engine compartment and start routing our wires. The blue wire will route into the cab of the vehicle and to the brake controller, and the orange wire will get routed up and to the power supply located at the fuse box. Next, we'll go ahead and take the gray duplex wire provided with our install kit and start routing it from inside near the brake controller to the engine compartment. We'll need enough length that we can add a circuit breaker and a ground. Now with our wire routed, we'll go ahead and cut off any excess, strip back the ends, and leave enough length to route to the breaker and ground. we can go ahead and start making our connections with the brake controller. As we'll be hardwiring this, we'll go ahead and cut off the brake controller plug and strip back all four wire ends. Now we can go ahead and add necessary butt connectors to make these connections. We'll take the blue wire that we located in the engine compartment and connect it with the blue wire on the brake controller. Stripping back a few inches of sheathing and the two wires inside, the black and white, this will be our power and ground for our brake controller. We'll connect them color for color, black to black, white to white. Now we have our red wire coming from the brake controller. This will be the brake control signal coming from the brake switch. First, we need to locate the brake signal wire on the vehicle. Using our test light, we've located the proper wire, which is a white wire, here underneath the dash. Using a quick splice connector, we'll go ahead and attach an extra length of red wire to the quick splice connector and manufacturer's brake control circuit. and then route it over to the brake controller, cutting off any excess from our wire, stripping it back and adding it to the butt connector. Now with all four connections made, we'll go ahead and take some black electric tape and wrap them up. Then we can take a couple of the black zip ties provided with our install kit and secure the wiring. Now we're back underneath the hood. Next, we'll go ahead and mount our breaker using the self-tapping screws provided with our install kit. Here on the driver's side, inner fender well will be a perfect location. Now we can go ahead and cut off any excess from the power wire that we ran previously of our gray duplex cable. 
Strip back the wire and add a ring terminal. We'll go ahead and attach this to the silver side of our breaker. Next, we'll take the white wire and again, trim off any excess wire, strip it back and add a ring terminal. This one will get attached here to a manufacturer's ground point. Now we'll go back to the orange wire. Some applications, this will already have a pre-attached ring terminal. We'll need to strip back the electrical tape to find out. In this application, it does not, so we'll go ahead and cut off any excess, strip it back, add a ring terminal, and attach it here to the fuse box power. Using an eight millimeter nut, part number 185917, we'll secure the ring terminal to the power supply post. Next, we'll need to take a piece of the leftover black wire from our great duplex cable and run a short lead from the breaker to the other power supply post. We'll go ahead and strip it back, add a ring terminal, and attach it to the copper side of our breaker. Now we'll route it over to the power supply post and again add a ring terminal and secure it with the eight millimeter nut. Now with all our wires run, we'll go ahead and use some of the black zip ties provided with our install kit to secure our wiring. Once we complete zip tying the wires, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess to clean up our install look. And this will complete the install of our e-trailer ETB C7 brake control install kit part number ETB C7 on our 1999 GMC Suburban.